Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis, and we're back with the MPO9 masterpiece, Rodimus Convoy. In the previous video, I focused very much on the Hot Rod, Hot Rodimus side of things, and the toy is called Rodimus Convoy, so let's get into that. This dude has a matrix, and it fits right in his hand. Right in the palm of his hand. This matrix is a little bit tiny. Uh, I do like that it fits in the palm of his hand rather well, because then, you know, he can he can cup it in his hands if, if you can get everything to balance properly. And uh, it also totally fits inside his chest cavity, uh, so that you can fully upgrade him into the legendary Season 3 Autobot leader that um, a whole lot of people hate, a little bit irrationally. Uh, he did have an iconic pose, though, that led to his upgrade, and that involved holding the Matrix. As you saw, that Matrix was... Tiny. But never fear, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any form of Masterpiece Optimus Prime or Convoy, then you have a larger matrix that his hands rather pleasantly fit inside. Uh, the only downside being that you have to have a completely separate toy for him to be holding a matrix. So let's iconicize. The evolution operation can really be broken down into three stages. You elongate the hips, rise and then raise the fins on his back, and execute the really cool face switch gimmick. And then, all thanks to the much larger Matrix, you've got yourself a Rodimus Prime. Those who aren't totally into Transformers might be asking what on earth is really accomplished by this. Rodimus Prime did have a different animation model from Hot Rod, but it was also very similar in many ways. The gains of this secondary robot mode are additional height and additional stature. Though I do wish that the rear spoiler fin did a little bit more. I like how it transforms, but it's almost a little bit too subtle. The hips are fine, but the spoiler piece can be very difficult to notice. However, the crowning achievement of the Rodimus Prime mode is the far more chiseled old Hot Rod face. This is what I was really hoping would work out, and I think it did. Brings back a lot of good memories of Dick Gautier from Season 3. Other than that, he's pretty much identical to Hot Rod in every other way. His legs are a little bit easier to move since they have less skirt in front of them, but that's really the only gain here. All the pros and cons are present including these shoulder joints that make it really hard to pose them with that Optimus Prime Matrix. This isn't really accomplishing what I was hoping, uh... Hang on, I, I think I can hear the crowd. They're speaking to me. I have a plan. Now you might be wanting a side-by-side -side comparison of an MPO9 in its Hot Rod mode versus an MPO9 in its Rodimus Prime mode. Well, I only have one MPO9, but I also have the powers of editing black magic on my side. So check it out. My phantom limb has delivered a Hot Rod. And as you can see, the differences, even in side-by-side, -side, are kind of minimal. Which is also entirely accurate. Oh, I'm... I once looked so young. Oh, time is so cruel. I appreciate how subtle everything is, but I cannot deny that it also takes some of the impact out of the whole he's got two robot modes thing. But you know what else he's got two of? Well, actually, he'd only have two of these if I bought the toy toy. Look, go away! Outside of the double robot modes, he's also got... a trailer. Like any good trailer, you can pop this sucker open and enjoy the goodies inside. Within the trailer is some accessory storage for all the bits and pieces that Masterpiece Hot Rod comes with. His guns and his two utility hands have solid storage places inside. For now, I'm just gonna pull these out though, because I got a thing to show you with them. Uh, basically, hang on a second. Get out of the way. You can take the two guns and combine them together to form Rodimus Prime's signature weapon, the, um, Photon Eliminator! It's also really big, and as I mentioned in the other video, he already has enough trouble holding one of these things, so if you don't modify and thicken these tabs, if you try to get Rodimus to hold this thing, it doesn't end very well. But if you do fix things up, it's actually still kind of hard to pose him with it. 
But you cannot fault the excellent gimmick of combining the two hot rod guns into the larger Rodimus Prime Photon Eliminator. The guns themselves are excellently done, it's the connection point to the hand that brings things down. But even then, I can't really say this is unsexy. In fact, it's very sexy. But back to that trailer! So hey, did you know that Rodimus can totally sit in that awesome Japanese kneeling position like in Pinnacle G1 episode, The Burden Hardest to Bear? Anyway, the hot rod guns actually have mounting points on this base. You can stick them onto the sides here to give it some uh, additional armament. Or if you so choose, you could also pull one of these off and then stick it up here on the top of the cannon for some triple barreled action up here. But even better still, let's say you take both guns and combine them. There's a special spot underneath here that's got a pair of access points and some lighting such that you can put the photon eliminator beneath the cannon and make it fairly formidable indeed. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, by the way, from all my crazy angles and whatnot, but this thing is huge! It also totally rolls. It's like a little tank. I love that there are multiple places to put the guns all over this trailer, and I adore the size! Oh, and uh, Rodimus can stand on it too. The trailer's base mode is a huge functional homage to the original toy. It works magnificently. It's dead solid. It's got lots of moving, clicky parts. A little bit of variation in where you can place the additional guns. And Rodimus has no problem standing on it and manning the turret. Being able to roll around on its wheels really adds to the feeling of it being a mobile attack station. I think the trailer really lives up to the masterpiece name and definitely rounds out the massive price tag of the Japanese release of the MP09. You are paying for a hell of a lot of tooling and plastic and engineering on this trailer. Personally, I love it. Unfortunately, if you don't care for the trailer, it does, as I said, make up a sizable amount of the price tag. And depending on how the trailer works for you, and how you've taken some of the other weaknesses of the toy so far, this can kind of dictate whether or not you're going to get the American release, the Japanese release, or just sit it out altogether. But before you make that decision, there is just one more thing that this trailer can do. <laughs> One of the biggest secrets of the MP09 design is the incredibly strange yet surprisingly awesome cheat it uses to involve the hot rod vehicle mode in the trailerized upgrade alt mode. It's a simple series of tweaks to the smaller sports car mode, with the only downside of being present in the engineering regardless of whether or not the figure comes with the trailer. I'm looking at you, hypothetical US release that as of this recording has no actual confirmed release time or venue. I'm looking at you. Base Winnebago complete. This is the other reason why you'd pick up the Japanese version of MP09. You get the classic Rodimus Prime vehicle mode. And you know how the trailer was kind of enormous in battle station mode? It's also kind of enormous as a trailer and makes for a pretty enormous vehicle. I have very little to complain about here. All the details I'd want to see are present. Flames, chrome pipes, effervescent Winnebago-ness. It's a big hefty thang. And again, either you love it or you don't. There is one thing I should point out right away though, you see this uh, crevice here that the, the fin, the spoiler is in? When you get this figure, you'll want to take some sandpaper and just very gently file on the top and bottom of the inside of this groove all throughout until you filed the orange away to reveal the maroon. Otherwise, the yellow paint on the spoiler will get scratched when you stick it in there. Very unfortunate. I have no idea why the spoiler is not just yellow plastic. Also, the roof here, um, these are parts from the back of the hot rod vehicle mode, and they uh, kind of have trouble forming a cohesive roof. Uh, in fact, if you, if you take notice, this entire thing here is a shell that's attached to the trailer. There's very little of hot rod actually showing here. On the bright side, it does have an opening cockpit with, again, uh, no seats, but hey, you know, the thought that counts. And it rolls quite heftily. In fact, I think it rolls a lot better in this mode, perhaps because... Uh, there's so much trailer weight pressing down that even if something is misaligned under here, you totally aren't going to notice it. Oh, and if you want some easy access to do that sandpapering, this piece of chrome can just come right off. So, uh, there's some more inner workings there. I really dig this trailer mode, but as I said, you kind of have to have been into this in the first place, because this thing does nothing to help out people who think the Space Winnebago's dumb. But, but, but then, if you think that, then you're dumb! Heh <laughs>
Oh, and for those wanting a vehicle mode size comparison, check it out. I totally got both of them in vehicle mode. I, that's just the trailer. I'm playing camera tricks on you. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Well, now we've seen it all. Is he worth the 150 to 200? Objectively, barely. I feel that between materials and engineering, you do get your money's worth out of him. And bearing in mind that I actually am a big Rodimus fan and am enjoying nearly every aspect of the figure, I don't feel ripped off. But, like some other Transformers Masterpiece releases, this guy has hurdles. And if you don't want to deal with those hurdles, do not pick him up, because they will be there, and they will be waiting. As I said in the previous video, if you don't care for the trailer, bear in mind that everything else you saw is probably going to be included with the US release of Masterpiece Rodimus, and probably for a fraction of the price. My guesstimate being somewhere between 50 to 90 bucks. That, I think, is worth it entirely. But the Japanese MP09 release, well, you've got to like Rodimus for one thing. And it would help if you're used to other Takara high-end releases, and the sadly common assembly foibles they tend to come with. Is this guy a colossal waste of money? I don't think so. But this is a figure where you will want to do your research before you decide on whether or not you want to pick it up. Because its price tag will not guarantee that you'll just love it regardless. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist. First masterpiece review done! 300s and 301st videos, according to YouTube listings, done! I'm off to go fishing with my boy Rodimus here. Because when I ride, I ride in style.